Freedom Island. I've come out here to record this in my brother's truck. It's dark out, so they can't see me. I've got a little light on my phone, so I use that for a flashlight, and I kind of turned it down, so it was just showing on the grass where I could see where I put my feet. And The nice thing about this family is they smoke, and they leave cigarette butts out in the yard and in the driveway, and they kind of leave a little trail like Hansel Gretel. So I was able to come out and see my way to get out to the truck because the little light on my phone would light up the Winston filters and show me the way to where I could find the truck and get in. And um, I had to shut the door real quiet. If I didn't shut it, it would leave the light on. I tried to reach up and push the little thing that makes the light go off inside the truck, but the button ain't right or I didn't know which way to push it or something. So the only thing I could think of to do was uh, get in here and then um, shut the door. So I'm not going to be able to sit here too long because it's going to be very hot in here being summertime. I can't run the engine because they'll hear it. So for the air conditioning and I can't open the windows because this little light on the phone is that the screen's lit up where I'm recording on it. And I'm afraid bugs are going to come in and bite me half to death and mosquitoes and all that. So here I sit in the dark with my little rectangle of light and I'm watching it mount up the seconds. I got a little thing on my flip phone that lets me record and after all I figured out with the signal and the laptop and the secret spy network that Uncle Boyce was part of and then figuring out how to use that smartphone and then I got that e-reader so all that stuff's packed and they're wrapped up in a hefty bag with my clothes and stuff. I've put it outside the house and I've put it looking like it's trash. It's not raining or nothing, so that's good. But I don't dare to pack anything or have anything look like it's something I might take with me on the trip. I'm going to go in a little bit when the bus starts running. The bus runs at 6 o'clock starting. And it's about 4 o'clock now. I wanted to come out while it was still dark and they couldn't see me. And in the summertime, it gets light so early. Also, I couldn't sleep anyways. So I snuck out to sit in the dark truck. And uh, if it gets too hot in here, then I'll just sit outside or something. I've got what I need to take on the bus. I've left a bag packed in the room upstairs. So my brother will think that I'm still packing and he don't know I'm ready to go. So, you know, I had to leave my bag I would have liked to take because he knows that's what I would take. But I went to Goodwill the other day and I got a bag to take like people take to the gym. I've hid it in the back of my brother's truck. He collects uh, cans and bottles and turns them in at the grocery store, you know, puts it in the machine and it rattles it around and you get credit points on a slip and you can go in and get money or trade it in and so on. And he does that. So I've took that uh, gym bag that I got at Goodwill and I've put it underneath some of them things, uh, bags, you know what I'm trying to say, of the cans and the bottles and so on. That's another good reason to have my other stuff inside the hefty bag because I tried to put my bag inside a bag and then put that underneath the beer and the can bags. But you don't know but what my things I'm bringing is going to smell like old Budweiser cans. And um, this, and I can do about that. Uh, put some body spray on it, I guess, or something, or, or change it out for another bag. Maybe I can stop at a different Goodwill and get a different bag and move everything over to it. So, But I've got all the good things that I need, like my e-reader and so on, is in that trash bag. And it looks like I've just put some trash out, you know, next to the side of the house where we get ready to wheel the, you know, the trash buggy out. I don't dare to leave nothing in my room or anywhere where my brother can get hold of it. The good news is my bus will be here in a couple hours and I can start and take off and go where I need to go. I hear police siren back behind me. I'm going to ease the door open just a little bit. No, I think it's going away. I don't know what a police siren's doing at this hour. All right. I had to put the light on for a minute, but I don't think anybody saw it.
nothing came on in the house. Like no lights came on in the house. So I don't think they. Also, if my brother thinks somebody's out here messing around with his truck, he does have a gun. So if he thinks that somebody's down here messing around with his truck, he might just assume I'm up in my room, never dream it was me, and just shoot down there. That's why you never know. You never know with this crazy family I got. But so far, I'm still alive. I'm not shot, and the light didn't come on. So I was starting to say the good news is that Lauren's on my side. I've been thinking this entire time that she's been on my brother's side and that she was spying on me and cooperating with him. Well, she was spying on me, but she was looking in on me. I didn't understand what she was trying to find out, and she was worried about me. At first, she didn't know what she was worried about, she said. She could tell I was doing something, and she was worried I was using again. So she was trying to look to see, was I talking to other people that I used to, you know, do business with pills and all that. And uh, so that's what she was first worried about. And then she realized, like, she saw that macrame, the crochet thing. And uh, I guess it wasn't as convincing as what I thought it was. She started rooting and poking around and everything. She thought I was helping Uncle Boyce. Isn't that stupid? She thought I was on Boyce's side. And she thought that's what I was doing. She thought I was secret jumping over there to be like undercover, sneaking to gather information for him to give it to Boyce about was anybody in the family saying anything against Boyce or something like that. And the stupidest thing, we kind of was laughing. I mean, you know, you sometimes you don't know to laugh, cry, or whatever Uh, neither one of us was telling the other person what they was thinking and we were watching out for each other because we both thought each other was helping boys but my brother is in league with boys full time both feet in Uh, I just don't even know I mean I would cry but I just don't even have the energy for it I don't understand I don't even want to put too much thoughts in it because we were raised the same way. I don't understand what happened to my brother. I don't understand it. How he would go over on this white power and all this. I don't... When we was going to school and stuff and there was the racial integration stuff from our parents, you know, time, and then it's been back and forth and back and forth in the city. And there is hard times with people, and people do bad things. And I think that there might have been something where my brother got pushed around some somewhere. I don't know who he was with. I don't know what he was doing, but he got in a movie theater one time. And people was uh, talking. It was a movie that it was almost all black people that went in to see it. I don't remember what it was. And that was like a cartoon for kids or something. So everybody had took their kids to see it. I think is what it was. And um, so people were talking in the movie theater. And um, my brother didn't think they ought to be talking in the movie theater. He ought to thought he ought to be quiet in the movie theater. But there's different kinds of people. And what they do in a movie theater is a lot about what kind of person they are and where they grew up with and what is regular for them and the people that come to that movie was all with their family so they're talking to their family and they're talking about what's going on in the movie and uh laughing and you know just normal like like you're watching tv at home you know and my brother is of the view that when you go to the movies it's disturbing other people's time there if you laugh or talk or make any noise or show any sign you're there which I think if you, myself, that if you want to watch a movie and have nobody around you talking or sneezing or breathing or laughing or choking under popcorn or farting or whatever people do, maybe you ought to stream it on the internet and just stay home, you know, by yourself in a room, get a, a projection room or whatever they call it, and just sit there and watch it by yourself, you know, if you, with well, anyway. So he got upset. I think he was about 20 when he done this. And 
he got upset that he thought people was being too noisy in the theater, and he tried telling people to hush or whatever, and they didn't like it. And then when he went to the bathroom later, uh, one or two people went in there with him, and they didn't beat him bad or anything like that. But I think they did push him a little bit. Like I think one of them told him to quit thinking he was the boss of everything or talking to them in a way they didn't like or something like that. And I think somebody shoved him. And, uh, you know, he turned it into this whole big story of, you know, that people would have to beat him to death with the trash can. But I think what happened is they pushed him. Or And it was, if it was two-on-one, that's bad. You know, it's not fair to have two-on-one. So I understand why he was mad. But I think one of the two pushed him, and he went backwards, and then the trash can fell over and made a noise, and that scared everybody, and they left. And then um, he either fell down or it was just, you know, behind him, and it just made him feel like he was in danger of falling or I don't know. I don't know. See, I wasn't in there, and I don't know what happened. But maybe it was that thing that happened with the trash can in the movie theater. I don't know what happened to him. But he's he's full-fledged in this thing. I looked in the back seat of the truck behind the driver part, and I saw he had a shopping bag, and I didn't know what kind of store it was. And I was curious. I'm a nosy. So I, I lifted up, you know, the top of the bag, and I looked in there, and he was buying uh, tactical. I don't know if it's bulletproof, but the pants, the shorts, it's shorts and a Sure, it's kind of like gym clothes, you know, or something like that. But it's or like your bicycle racer. That's what it looks like. It looks to me like a bicycle racer clothes. But the pants, you can see where the gun goes, like and where your clips to your gun go. And then I don't know if the top is like a bulletproof. I'm not sure. But it took me a second just because, you know, he wouldn't be a person that would go to a gymnasium. I didn't know what to make of it. And then I figured out, I looked up, they had a brand on it later. I looked on my laptop and um, I seen what it was. I also, I didn't want to look at it too much because if he wouldn't like it, if I was to open up that bag and rustle around in his stuff. So I only could just look for a second, but I made a note of what it was called and then I looked it up and uh, that's what it was, tactical clothes. So, I mean, so it's super hard that he's not ambivalent. He's a hundred percent for it, but then it's also, good that Lauren's more on my side but I'm also scared for Lauren because what if he turns against her you know if my brother's gone about half crazy they'll turn against their family and everything else